You can tell I'm recording after work today because for once in my life I'm wearing serious earrings. <laughs> and even then it was only because I had a serious meeting today. Welcome back to my knitting podcast. My name is Nadine and you can find me at Your Knitting Bestie on Instagram, Ravelry and here on YouTube. On this channel, I like to talk about what it's like to be a completely obsessed knitter in sunny Brisbane. And today I'm, I'm recording a little bit different today. I'm recording after work, uh, whereas I usually record on a Sunday, but tragically, the footage I recorded on a Sunday did not work out. Um, there's an issue with the file, so we're here recording again. And it's really no burden to talk about my projects again, because I've thought of even more things. <laughs> That I'd like to say but there is a fair bit to talk about today so I reckon I need to get going. Okay on to the projects. So my first uh, finished object that I'd like to share with you today is, drumroll, the Rebel cardigan um, and I've had this on my needles for two and a half months so I started it I think on the 2nd of January while I was on holidays and I finished it on the 14th of March so I think overall about 10 weeks and to finish giving you the stats on the project I ended up using just under 8 skeins of the Alpaca 2 from Isaiah and I'll put the colour on screen and I held that yarn double so I think that ends up being about 400 grams of that yarn although I didn't quite use all of it. I'll show you what I have left, um, which isn't, isn't a lot actually. Um, that was the, the small amount that was left, so I was pretty happy with being able to use most of the yarn, and I'm sure I can find a good purpose for these little bits. My sister was actually talking about me making a little Sophie scarf um, for her dog, who I call my niece. <laughs> And I think she would look very cute in a Sophie scarf. Maybe that amount would be good, but um, that's possibly too nice a yarn. <laughs> With no disrespect to my niece. So that's how much yarn I used. The total cost, so that was $16 per 50 gram ball or skein, sorry, of Alpaca 2, which I bought from the little yarn store. So that comes out at $128 AUD. And of course, when I, when I was doing these notes and I saw that I'd spent $128, uh, I had that split second where you're like, oh gosh, that was a lot to spend on yarn. But you know what? First of all, I don't feel bad at all because um, it's in the budget, it's my money, and it brings me a lot of joy. And also, that's 10 weeks of pure bliss that I had knitting with that yarn to make this project. And that comes out at, what, $12.80 a week for this amount of joy and enjoyment. It's an absolute steal, I reckon. Total bargain. Shop around. You will not find a better way, <laughs> in my opinion, to spend your money. So I did actually, for the sake of doing some knitter math, if you would indulge me for a moment, um, in my mind. So this, we said, costs about $12.80 a week, right? That is less than the cost of buying three coffees a week and also less than the cost of the average cinema ticket in Australia. So again, total bargain. <laughs> of course, not that you need to justify it at all, but I thought it was a bit of fun. So to give you the measurements, um, and I hope by now I've put a picture of the finished object on the screen, it is super hot right now, so I probably won't put it on. But so from the underarm to the bottom of the hem was 33 centimeters. From the, um, the armpit to the end of the cuff was 40 centimeters. And the whole back ended up being 61 centimeters. And I forgot to put the, uh, the circumference on in my notes, but I will put that on screen um, after this, after I record this. So the interesting thing is that the measurements pretty much didn't change after blocking. 
and I was actually expecting it to change a little bit after blocking, so I was surprised. But I thought that would be an interesting fact to share with you, because if you're knitting with alpaca too, you might find um, it good to know or find some comfort in the fact that you can try your garment on as you're making it, and when you block it, it won't transform too much. It won't grow too much when you block it. Uh, which I find helpful to know, you know, when you're checking for fit and length of sleeves and all of that sort of thing. The overall fit I absolutely love. So I said in my last video that I really wanted it, it to be a regular fit. I didn't want it to be too cropped, which I have a habit of doing. And I also didn't want it to be too long because I thought that might look a little bit odd on my particular body shape, although I'm sure it looks beautiful on other people, including in the designer's photos. So I think I actually ended up getting that measurement right. Um, I'll put up some B-roll so that you can properly see how it hangs and all of the rest of that. Um, but I'm really happy with where it landed. It's definitely one of my longer cardigans but I think there is definitely a place in my wardrobe for that length. And I possibly might even knit some more cardigans or even jumpers, which is possibly an Australian term for sweaters. Let me know if you also use jumpers <laughs> as, a, as a name for a sweater. Um, yeah, I think that length could find its way into more projects that I make in the future. And I think the reason I had made so many garments cropped is possibly down to my own impatience. <laughs> because of course you're knitting the body and you just want it to be done so that you can put it on and enjoy wearing it. Um, but I think it could be worth the time to knit a little bit further. Because in my opinion, it just looks really polished and beautiful at the length that it is now. So some comments on the yarn to finish up. I've spoken about, about it a little bit in my podcast so far, so you probably heard a little bit of my thoughts. I think it is a beautiful fibre, absolutely. I love the colour, even if it is a bit of, bit of a beast <laughs> to deal with when you're actually knitting and you can't see your stitches. But the hand feel is incredible. The drape, particularly after blocking, is just beautiful. And it, it is possible that because it's a bit of a softer fi uh, fiber, it might uh, stretch a little bit with wear, with the weight of the garment pulling it down. But I'm really, I'm not too concerned about that. The only thing I would say is that it did bleed quite a, quite a bit while I was blocking it. So I blocked it in the bathtub. <laughs> a very sophisticated mechanism. And... It could be the impact of the wool wash on the garment. Um, I read somewhere that using wool wa wash sometimes causes color to bleed. Um, but yeah, I left it in the bathtub to soak for a little bit. And when I went to take it out, the bath, the bath water was a little bit tinged blue. But by the time I had finished pressing the water out of the garment, it had turned like a, a rather dark blue. There was quite a lot of color that bled out of the garment. And luckily I also have navy blue towels because <laughs> I was a little bit worried about the color transferring onto the towel. But because it was a dark color, pretty much the same color actually, I'm glad to say that no towels were harmed in the blocking of this garment. <laughs> um, but that is something to keep in mind uh, if you do use this yarn because uh, I wouldn't want you to lose any towels to this garment. And I was also very careful not to wear it until it was completely dry, particularly because at the time when I checked it I was wearing a white top and I thought that could end in disaster. But so that is the overall summary of my Rebel Cardigan. I absolutely love this garment, which I acknowledge could be recency bias because it seems that whatever project I've finished last is my absolute favorite at the time. <laughs> but
but it is truly lovely. And maybe I'll do an update after I've worn it for a little while to let you know my, my thoughts once I've settled into having this garment in my wardrobe. In particular, if you were thinking about this pattern, the reason I would recommend it to you is because of the very interesting construction of the yoke with the contiguous uh, knitting style and just the fact that you have an incredible shoulder fit at the end of making this garment. Um, and I think that's probably related to the interesting yoke construction because it just sits so high up on your neck and sits perfectly on top of your shoulders. So there's none of that, uh, you know, a shoulder slipping off that sometimes you can get with cardigans. So those are the things I absolutely love about it. I'm trying to think if I have any, you know, constructive criticism for the pattern. And I really don't. <laughs> it was perfectly clear. And I did see a comment from someone who said that they had just started and that they had also found that when they read the in instructions for the first time, they couldn't quite, you know, make heads or tails of it of, as to how it would come together, similar to what I had. But I think it is a real, um, you know, it says a lot about the pattern that if you just follow every step, step by step, literally just taking it as it comes, the garment will come together and it will look beautiful. And I did actually have a message from someone as well on Instagram and they mentioned that they had been influenced by me <laughs> to go off and buy a whole bunch of dark colored yarn to make their own rebel cardigan. So I think that is just the highest compliment. <laughs> and I wish you a lot of bright light to be able to see your stitches. Okay, so the Rebel Cardigan is my only finished object. So we are moving along then to the whips. And the first one I'd like to talk to you about is one that I've mentioned before. It's the Vest Number no. 1 by My Favourite Things Knitwear, which I'm knitting with one of my friends. And I decided to knit mine in Drops Air. I believe my colour is number 3, Pearl Grey. And my friend did hers in a beautiful colour as well which was beige, but I'll put some footage up of the beige color because you'll see it's actually, I think it's not that beige. <laughs> it has some beautiful light grays, dark grays, and even a bit of a peachy tone as well. So I think it's a really interesting color actually. Um, anyway, to start off, quickly some comments on the yarn, which I'm actually really enjoying using. So when we last spoke, I was in the process of knitting up my swatch. And after filming that video, I went ahead and blocked the swatch, of course. And I found that the properties of the yarn or of the swatch changed quite a bit after blocking. So this is the swatch now. And I found that after blocking, it has a bit more substance to it. It's almost like the water kind of dampened down the fibers and made them settle together a little bit more. I think that there's better stitch definition. I think the drape is better. Whereas before it was so light that it just kind of didn't move, it didn't have any weight to it. So I think it's a bit more structured and a bit more drapey. Um, so I'm really happy with how it kind of transformed after blocking. And I did have a little bit of trouble getting gauge for this project. So it was supposed to be 17 stitches to 10 centimeters from memory. And at first, I think I had 19 stitches on a 4.5 millimeter needle. So I went up to a five millimeter needle and ended up with 16 stitches. <laughs> So just slightly too few, but um, I ended up thinking she'll be right. We'll just go with the 16 stitches and I'm perfectly happy for that to impact the fit just a small amount. But it is funny, I've been, since I've been knitting with my friend who is doing very well considering this is her first proper garment and she is pretty much a beginner. She might've had a little bit of practice when she was much younger 
uh, with her grandmother or something like that. But she's doing very, very well, picking up a lot of different techniques, but she's being very, very um, particular. So she's reading every instruction, and if she gets something a little bit wrong, or she makes a mistake, she's going back and she's fixing it, uh, which is very good of her. And it's made me realize how much of a she'll be right attitude <laughs> to adopt the Aussie vernacular uh, I've adopted in my knitting. I very much have a bit of a, yeah, if there's a bit of an imperfection, no worries. Who's going to look at it? <laughs> so I should show you the garment, show you where I'm up to now. So this is it so far. Absolutely loving the colour. Very excited about um, adding the trimming. So to give you an example, when I was knitting up this little bit down here where you join the front and the back, I think I'd add in an extra increase where I wasn't supposed to. And I only realised two rows or so later and to be honest, I didn't even think about going back to correct it. <laughs> I then just did a knit two together um, in the next row to kind of bring it back into what it was supposed to be. So somewhere in the armhole, there's just a little blip <laughs> of extra fabric. And I'm perfectly fine with that. <laughs> Surely once you add the ribbing, um, that will forgive any little errors. So that's the approach I'm taking with mine at least and I think for me that's a little bit a part of the joy of knitting being able to make mistakes and to have it be okay so I do think I will go back and add the ribbing at the top and on the armholes before finishing the rest of the body actually I meant to show you so with this amount that I've knit so far I've just reached the end of my second 50 gram ball um, of the drops air. So it's actually gone a really long way, I think, which is pretty impressive. I still have three, three entire bowls left of the drops air. So I wonder if I can quickly show you. So that's, <laughs> does that give you an idea of how much there is? And there's a little bit of curl up there as well. So it's almost hitting the top of my belt here. And that's just with the two bowls. So getting a lot of use out of that drops air, which is fabulous. And it made me wonder actually, if I might be able to use two special skeins to make a vest, which I hadn't actually considered as a kind of two skein project. So I have, it's so beautiful this yarn. I have, oop, let me get a hold of it these two skeins, which is, oh, they're so special to me because they were gifted to me by my dad and my stepmother. And um, I really want to make sure that I use it in a project which gets a lot of use and which shows the yarn to its full spectacular beauty. So this is, um, which one is it? Malabrigo in the color Talisman. I'll put up the full details on the screen. Um, but I'm wondering, now that I'm seeing how far 100 grams of that drops air went, I wonder if I might be able to use these two skeins to make a similar vest. Even if it's cropped, that would be fine with me as well. Um, I think I would get a lot of wear out of them because I tend to wear a lot of blazers to work. So having a little vest underneath could be nice. So I'm very excited by that prospect. To wrap up my comments on the vest number one, I'd like to quickly make a comment on the yarn again. So I mentioned in my last video that I bought the Drops Air from a place called TK's Yarn, which is an Australian store. And I do love to support Australian stores where I can, but it was a little bit expensive for what I understand is a budget yarn for many of you, which is very lucky. <laughs> um, so from TK's yarn, this was $20 a bowl for $50. And I mentioned in my last video that I don't know if I would pay $20 a bowl for this again. 
because even though I'm perfectly happy with the yarn, what I could get for twenty dollars a um, skein for fifty grams is probably more along the lines of something like this. So there was that. But I had so many very helpful, wonderful comments saying that Wool Warehouse um, has a much better price. So I think it was just under five pounds per bowl. And if you then convert that into Australian dollars, it was under $10 a bowl, so half price. And then the shipping, when you click on the Australian currency, it comes up at the top of the website, um, a little flag that says, quick shipping to Australia. <laughs> um, and they do have on their website, so the postage is $15.50, which is pretty good. That's in Australian. And, um, and it ships within seven to 14 days, which again, isn't actually that bad. So absolutely no criticism to TK's yarns. I appreciate the costs of importing yarn and I'm sure that they've priced this appropriately for the costs that they've incurred in doing so. Um, and I'll certainly buy from them again, particularly because the package they sent this in was super cute. So I, I really like the fact that I, I bought from them and I will buy again, but probably a different yarn. And if I do put an order in through Wool Warehouse, I might indulge in some other yarns as well, because I saw that they have Cascade 220, which I keep hearing everywhere, but I haven't seen the, um, the wool version of Cascade 220 in the shops that I frequent <laughs> here in Australia. So I would be really curious to try out that yarn as well. So particularly if I'm putting in a big order, then the shipping, which I think I'm sure has a weight limit on it, then that shipping becomes a lot more reasonable. This is some knitter math again. <laughs> or you could go in with a friend as well to get some, to get some yarn from overseas. Anyway, I digress. Wool Warehouse also, everyone says, has sales all of the time. So I have signed up for their newsletter and am eagerly awaiting the next sale. Okay, on to the next whip. So in my video called 10 Alternatives to the Sophie Scarf, I decided to pick out the pattern which I liked the best. And I did that with the purpose of, well, with the intention of knitting a gift for a cousin in Canada. And I ended up picking the minnow scarf as the pattern which I would like to do because it looks beautiful. And I bought the pattern and the biggest problem I've had so far is the yarn. <laughs> so I mentioned in my 10 alternatives to the Sophie scarf video that I had this special skein of yarn, which was the life in the long grass moon sock in the color rain around $40 or so from the little yarn store. And that was this beautiful luxury blend yarn. So with some silk in it, a light blue base and some really colorful, gorgeous speckles through the rest of the yarn. I was so excited to use that yarn, but I've run into some trouble with it. So to be fair, I am reasonably new to winding yarn. I, for some reason, put off the expense of purchasing a Swift and a ball winder because some of the shops that I uh, shop through either wind for free or for a reasonably low price. So that is the way I always did it because I think a lot of the yarn that I used was in balls already. So I didn't have to wind that many, but as my taste gets more and more expensive, <laughs> I find myself winding more and more, so I, I, I bought the equipment that I need. And I haven't had too much trouble with it so far. You know, maybe at first I had some trouble with my tension, so I wasn't kind of tensioning the yarn as it was being wound, which meant that the ball was a little bit scrappy, a little bit untidy, but I was able to fix that up. But for this particular skein, I... Um, unwound it from the little twirl that it's in and just popped it on the swift and then just could not for the life of me get it to wind into a ball because it seemed to be so tangled 
So it would kind of, you know, spin for a bit, but then get stuck. And I'd have to pick up what I had wound so far and kind of feed it through the different loops and hoops to try and get it to keep going. And I tried for about an hour and I got no more than a little ball like this. So I gave up on it um, because my knitting time is at a premium these days and I really wanted to be sitting down and knitting. <laughs> so I actually still have that yarn on the Swift and I'm hoping to con my partner into winding it up for me. So wish me luck on that front. So after I kind of put, put that yarn aside, I went to try a different combination. So I used some stash yarn and I used the Sanders Garn Double Sunday in the color Almond and I held that together with, this is just a little scrap, but with this Tin Silk Mohair. I'll put the color on screen. And this was left over from a cardigan that I knitted my, knitted my sister for her wedding. And I thought if I held them double, that that would make a really beautiful combination, very luxurious in my mind. And I was very pleased to use mohair because I believe it's called for in the minnow scarf pattern, if I'm remembering correctly. And it does give the material, the fabric, this beautiful little soft focus halo that I loved. So I'll show you what I knit up. It's probably a little small so it might be hard to see. Can you see that okay? So I think it looks nice and I love the little fuzzy halo but unfortunately the fabric that is made is just too dense, it's too thick. So I kind of figured, so I decided to make the headband because I am new to the Half Fisherman's Rib. So I wanted to try it out on just a kind of straightforward little project. And if you're making the headband, then you need to be able to knot it, right? And I kind of thought that tying a knot in this thick fabric wouldn't make, would make an unsightly knot. And if you kind of look at it, this is how much drape it has, <laughs> which is to say none. <laughs> so if you were to tie it, you might end up with these <laughs> little rabbit ears um, from a headband instead of having, you know, if you have a thinner drapier fabric, you might be able to have the ends lie against your head, which seems like it would be a nicer look. <laughs> so with regret, I set aside this yarn combination, which was such a shame because I feel like such a trendy cool girl <laughs> being able to come on here and say, oh, I'm using the Sanders Garn Double Sunday with um, Tin Silk Mohair. <laughs> That seems like such a trendy combination, but unfortunately, I don't think it uh, works for this project, even though it is beautiful. So I'm onto my third yarn selection, if you can believe it. And I went back to my stash. I'm glad to report that I think this one will do the trick. Let me pick it up for you. Okay, so my third yarn choice is Feels Like Alpaca from Lion Brand, and this is in the color Silver, which I think is quite beautiful. So this is an acrylic yarn. It is 87% acrylic, 7% polyester, and 6% nylon. The suggested needle for this yarn is 4.5 millimeters, and it suggests that you might get a gauge of 22 stitches by 28 rows. The fabulous thing about this yarn is that it is both machine washable and dryable, which I think is excellent for gift knits because it seems that many of my gift knits do tend to make their way into the washing machine and the dryer. <laughs> so this is a nice little bit of insurance, meaning that they would be able to use the project still if that were to happen. So my comments on using this yarn is that it actually does feel like alpaca in my mind. And I did just spend two and a half months holding alpaca too from Isaiah, which is an alpaca wool blend, but it's not that dissimilar. It feels um, 
quite nice, particularly for an acrylic yarn. The only difficulty I've had is that I found that the yarn is a little bit slippery. So both on the needles, it's a little bit harder to con control the movement of the yarn, which I probably compound because I only have steel needles <laughs> or metal needles. But also in the actual garment, you can tell that the stitches don't kind of grip onto each other in the same way that you would have with a wool. So I found that in the um, double Sunday, I think it looks so, whoops, <laughs> I think it looks so neat because the stitches do kind of grip together. Whereas, so this is what it looks like in the pattern. I wonder if, what's the best way to show you? There you go. I think it's really, really beautiful so far. And I quite like how it looks. So even though I'm not holding it with a mohair, because the feels like alpaca has these nice long hairs in it like you find in alpaca, it does still have a nice halo to it. But the only difficulty is that because the stitches don't grip each other as much, the cables, I think, don't look as neat. Because when you get to that last stitch of the cable and it kind of stretches out, it stretches out even more than it would in a wool. This is just my thoughts on it, of course. But so I think the cables don't look as neat. But in saying that, I still think they look beautiful. So... I'm very pleased with how this is knitting up. Actually, on Sunday, it's only Tuesday today, but on Sunday, I probably only had this much uh, knitted up. And even though I haven't had that much couch time, <laughs> I'm now at this much. So how many repeats have I done? One, two, three, four. I'm on my fifth repeat, I think. So I think I've got maybe one or two more and then that'll be done. And I actually thought if you end up making this, I thought it might be cute if this was just a joined headband. So if you didn't have to tie it and it was just a little strip like this that you could use as an ear warmer or something like that. Not me personally, of course, I would send this to one of my friends overseas <laughs> if I were to do this. But, or I could use it just as a normal headband away from my ears. That could be nice as well. But I thought you might be able to do it if you were to start the pattern at where the half fisherman's rib starts and maybe use a provisional cast on or something. And then you could uh, kitchener stitch the ends together after finishing either a cable or a half fisherman's rib section. Or you could just, you know, do it in the normal manner and sew it together. But I thought that might be a nice alteration as well if you didn't want to have the hassle of trying to tie it up in a way that looks nice, which does seem like it might be a bit of a struggle. I'd like to, if I can, and I don't want to um, manhandle this too much because it is a gift, but I thought it could be nice as well if you need it a little bit longer than the pattern calls for, and then you could wear it, you know, like this and then tie it at the bottom and have one of the tails coming down this way. Could be fun. Anyway, needless to say, I'm having so much fun with this project. I was a little bit hesitant on the half fisherman's rib because as I mentioned, I hadn't done that stitch yet and I was a little bit in like a little bit intimidated by it. And doing the first two rows, because I understand the half fisherman's rib is done over two rows, it's a two row repeat pattern. Um, the first two rows were a bit of a struggle and I undid them and redid them a couple times. But once I got the hang of it, I actually have so much fun uh, knitting this particular stitch pattern. Sorry, I keep dropping this needle and that's what's making that noise. <laughs> um, but yeah, the stitch pattern is so much fun. And it makes such a gorgeous uh, lofty, to use a sophisticated term, or squishy if you're not feeling sophisticated. <laughs> but it makes such a beautiful fabric that feels quite different to really anything that I've knitted so far. 
I haven't tried brioche, although that's the next on my hit list. Um, so this actually gives me a little bit of confidence in trying out something like brioche. And I could really see myself making the bigger versions of this minnow scarf. So for example, that um, the mid-sized one, or even the bigger Sophie, sh uh, the bigger minnow shawl, which I could wear into the office. So the minnow pattern, just to close off this project, is fully charted, and you do have to use the charts. So that's just something to keep in mind if you haven't used charts much before. But I haven't used charts much before, and I didn't have that much trouble with reading the pattern. So I wouldn't let that stop you if you are considering knitting this pattern. Okay, gosh, we really have to hurry along. <laughs> Not only is the sun going down, but this is just going to be such a long episode. <laughs> Okay, very quickly, I won't talk too much about this because I talked about it in my last podcast, my last podcast video, which was a knit and chat where I was knitting on a sock. So if you'd like to hear a little bit more about it, I'll link to that last episode, but not too much is going on. So this is the Perfect Yarn by Arne and Carlos. I've just turned the heel, so I've just used the normal uh, slip stitch heel and the normal little turning the heel here so I'm on to knitting the foot now so yeah not too much to report there the only thing I would say is that I adopted the jogless uh, knitting technique for when you're knitting in the round with two colors so to do that you kind of finish up with one color and when you start the new one you knit one full round and then when you get to the point where the color changed you lift up the first leg, uh, the right leg, sorry, of the stitch below, pop it up onto the needle, and then knit it together. And in that way, there's not that kind of very obvious jog where the colour changes, because you're knitting in a spiral. It makes it just the slightest bit more subtle. So you can see it there. It's definitely not perfect, but it makes it a little bit less of a jagged edge. So I've been doing that where there's a solid colour change, like a solid line where you could obviously tell where the colour change is. And I quite liked that. So you might consider including that as well if you're using this yarn. And we're not even going to talk about the MCAL. <laughs> it's sitting behind the camera staring at me. And I saw that one very smart comment, uh, viewer who left a comment for me had said that they are aiming to finish their MCAL by October and I think I can get on board with that deadline so I'm adopting it as my own as well. <laughs> Alrighty so to finish up with acquisitions I haven't bought anything recently so go me <laughs> but I did want to quickly mention in this section that a very lovely viewer has bought me not one not two but four sock patterns and I am so grateful to you, Lynn. So she bought me, uh, there's a, a pattern called the Swiss Dot, Swiss Dot Shorties by Nancy Wheeler, which is a very fun, colorful, playful sort of design, which I can't wait to try because they're also shorties. So I guess they must be quicker as well because you're knit, not knitting so much of the leg. There is the Winterfest socks, by K.F. Jones, and this is a bit more of an intricate, more elevated, sophisticated pattern, if you will, and I think they look beautiful. The next one was Coffee Talk by Tracy Miller, which is another beautiful pattern, which I believe Lynn said to me she thinks could probably be used for either gender, and I agree. I don't think there's, it, it does have a bit of texture on it, but there's nothing about it that screams feminine texture, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So depend, it, you could use it for anyone who presents masculine or feminine. Uh, and then finally, the Rumple Socks by Kay Jones, which is another really beautiful textured sock. And the thing that I really like about this one 
is the fact that the texture doesn't look like it would be super difficult, but it does have a lot of visual impact. So I am loving the look of them and I'm certainly going to cast on one of those patterns soon, possibly after I finish this pair of socks. Okay, so then a quick note on my plans for the future, of which I have many. <laughs> so I mentioned in my last knit and chat episode that I would love your baby yarn recommendations and you have given me so many great options. Um, it, and some of them were the ones that I'd researched. So I'm feeling very validated <laughs> by that. And I feel like my research skills are up to scratch. So I will be putting together a video, I think, on baby yarn options, the ones that I think are probably the best ones. And then I'll also do a video, I think, on baby blanket patterns, because I do have an idea in mind. So that's definitely one plan coming up. But because the vest number one is going so quickly, which I absolutely love since it's um, a bit of a chunkier gauge, which I, I don't often get to do here in Australia because it's too hot. But I'm hoping this light yarn means that maybe it's okay. Fingers crossed. Anyway, because this is knitting up so quickly, which is so fun, um, I'm thinking I need to start planning my next garment because this will be done before I know it, I think. So I'm thinking of doing a lightweight sweater as my next project. And at the moment, I've got a total thing for Anka Stripped. I'm sorry about my pronunciation, <laughs> who drafted the Rebel Cardigan pattern. And she has a pullover or sweater pattern, which just looks so stunning. I think it's, I think you pronounce it the Lenu sweater. And it is a saddle shoulder design, so another interesting shoulder fit to explore. And it has this intricate panel that runs down the front of the sweater, which looks kind of cabled, but is apparently made up of only decreases and yarn, over, yarn overs. So I'm really excited to try that. I think it calls for a fingering weight and a lace weight. So early plans are if I end up putting in an order through Wool Warehouse, which seems likely, <laughs> uh, I think I might try the Fingering Weight Cascade 220 with a mohair maybe from Knitting for Olive, uh, which I can get from, I believe, I think the little yarn store actually might have Knitting for Olive now. Oh, and one final thing on the Leno sweater, if you're somewhere that requires something like a hat, not me, <laughs> but for you, there is a matching Lenu hood which goes with this pattern and I believe there's a code that you can use to get 50% off the hood pattern if you buy the sweater pattern at the same time. So that might be something that you consider. Okay, that is everything. That is all of my projects and I actually enjoyed talking about them the second time round. <laughs> even more than I did the first time, which I think really uh, really supports the idea that I could talk about my knitting underwater and uh, probably for a long time. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me. I, as always, really appreciate all of your comments and I'm having so much fun reading your comments on the last video where you're sharing with me all of your different journeys into knitting and I've seen some really interesting ones so far but I'm just so glad that we're all here connected by the best thing in the world, <laughs> which is knitting. So if you liked this video, it would be wonderful if you would give it a thumbs up. It really means a lot to me and it shows me which videos you enjoy the most so I can make more of those sorts of videos. And if you haven't already, I would be just beside myself if you would consider subscribing so that we can hang out again in the future. So thanks again for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I look forward to seeing you next time.